From today's TMJ4, this is Breaking News Now. And that breaking news from I-43 and right just south of Center Street. Looks like a semi-truck and car collided in the northbound lanes of 43. The two uh, most, centermost lanes are closed. Everyone's being diverted over to the right as they're dealing with the wreck and clearing debris off the interstate. No word on injuries. We'll continue to keep you updated as the commute continues. Storm Team 4, hats, hoods, mittens, whatever you got, don't leave home without them. These bitter cold conditions are bone chilling. Temperatures in the teens, but that wind is so gusty, it takes your breath away. Looks are deceiving too. The sun is shining, but it's cold. How cold will it get tonight? Meteorologist Michael Fish is here with the lowdown. And Fish, the sun is getting more intense can every you, day. Can you feel it when your car's sitting out in the sun? All of a sudden you go and you're like... But then the wind just sucks it away. Yeah, and then you open the door. You're right. Now, Steve is right. The sun is a little bit more intense at this time of year, but right now it's not helping us much. Now, first things first, we're going to have even colder conditions this weekend, but I'm watching the radar. Not so much right now. This is for tomorrow. Look out to the west. We have some clouds, uh, some light snow and flurry activity. That's going to start to roll its way in as the day goes on tomorrow. Not tonight. Your evening plans should be just fine for travel. Yes, it is going to be on the cool side. Wind's dying down just a bit, but there we are for tomorrow. A couple snow showers, flurries out there. If we see any accumulation, it should stay relatively light, if anything at all. Current temperatures 15 Milwaukee. You've got 14 Racine, Kenosha, 10 in Waukesha. Remember, we had to factor in the wind. Feels like five below Waukesha, one below in Port Washington. Now the thing is, this is going to feel mild tonight compared to what's on the way this weekend. Temperatures falling through the single digits, but you guys, we're going colder than that. I'll let you know how cold we're going to get and when those winds really kick up. All that coming up. You know how to charm a guy, Fish. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Thanks. If the winter weather has you feeling a little bit stir crazy, this next story is the one for you. And Mike Jacobs in the newsroom with a story coming up new on Live at 5. Mike. Hi, Courtney and Steve. Well, it's too cold to go outside with the kids, so what do you do? The family friendly hotspot sure to give you a little relief from the cabin fever. It's a cure. That's coming up on Live at 5, guys. All right, thanks, Mike. Stay with today's TMJ4 for your Storm Team forecast needs. From travel to closings, it's all at TMJ4.com. A warning today from contractors, home improvement projects could take longer and cost more money in the future. That's because there's a shortage of workers, which is why, as Jonah Kaplan explains, a big home improvement expo started today with a job fair. The Nary Home Improvement Show starts today, and in its 53rd year, more than 300 exhibitors advertise their work. But instead of just that, now for the first time, they're advertising their industry. They're looking for help because they say they really need it. The show started with a fair, a job fair. 30 companies recruiting for long-term hires. There's homes that are out there that have been let go because of the fact that the economy was a little on the rough side. So now they're looking to end up doing improvements to their houses. They're staying in their houses longer. But Miller says he's having trouble remodeling homes because he's having trouble building a workforce. The jobs are there, but the interest is not. The gap is going to end up being in that area of the individuals who are currently in our field that are highly skilled, are in their late 40s, 50s, even going into the 60s. They're going to be coming closer to retirement. Behind that, there's this big gap. Several other contractors expressed the same worry and organized today's fair to attract young adults like Patrick Schloman. I just noticed a lot of kids my my age and things like that they want to be behind a computer behind a keyboard pressing a button all the time and I don't understand why that is maybe that's just how we've been raised you know communication skills Shloman says he'd much rather work outdoors I like being active I like talking to people if you didn't have time to make it to this job fair today not to worry because all these contractors will be posting their jobs online at the Nary website and we have a link to that on our website tmj4.com in West Dallas Jonah Kaplan, today's TMJ4. Industry experts estimate there are 600,000 jobs open and unfilled in home improvement across the country. UW-Madison employees could find out by April whether they have a job or not. The chancellor's office says layoffs are necessary and a direct result of the governor's proposed budget. Governor Scott Walker proposed $300 million in cuts to the entire UW system. 
The chancellor admits the total number of layoffs would be relatively small in Madison. Governor Walker also says he's open to uh, extending a tuition freeze at the UW system beyond the next two years, as is currently proposed. Walker says tying tuition hikes to inflation makes sense. However, there's no specific proposal right now to do that. Governor Walker still in London touting Wisconsin and trying to convince businesses to open offices here. This is just the latest trip for the governor as he weighs a possible run for the White House in 2016. There was a false alarm at the Capitol in Madison today. The fire alarms went off this morning, prompting an evacuation. Everyone was allowed back inside a short time later. It was the real deal in Milwaukee this afternoon. Firefighters called the 38th in Congress for a house fire. It started in a second story bedroom. Everyone got out and nobody was hurt. A family rescued from their burning home on the city's south side, and they have police to thank. A sergeant was patrolling that area when she noticed smoke near 15th place, just south of Mitchell. She found the burning home, and along with two other officers, got five people out of the home safely, including a 10-year-old boy. To Sheboygan now, where an alderman has resigned after some serious allegations. Kevin Matichek, charged with sexual assault of a then 14-year-old boy. Police tell us they're also investigating the possible assault of a 17-year-old boy. The Sheboygan City Clerk received Matichek's resignation yesterday. A Kenosha High School teacher has resigned this week, and now police are investigating whether he had inappropriate contact with a student. More news now. Powerball mania may be over. The payouts have just begun, and a few people in Wisconsin are not walking away empty-handed. Nobody here matched these six winning numbers from last night. But a ticket purchased in Racine is a $1 million winner for hitting five numbers. There's also a $30,000 winner in Oshkosh and four $10,000 winners. Those tickets were sold in Blair, New Lisbon, Sturgeon Bay, and Racine. Three people will wind up splitting that big Powerball jackpot. Those tickets sold in North Carolina, Texas, and Puerto Rico, making the first time a winning ticket was ever purchased outside the continental U.S. As for the three ticket holders, they haven't come forward yet. They'll have to split some $380 million before taxes. Love doesn't cost a thing, and some middle schoolers are sharing the love this Valentine's Day. Hundreds of students at North Middle School created more than 600 cards for veterans at the Milwaukee VA Medical Center. The students say they are happy to give back to those who have served our country. It means that other people care about them, and I think it means a lot. It's just really important because without them, I don't know, it, would, it wouldn't be the same. The students will deliver all of those Valentines to the Milwaukee VA Medical Center tomorrow. Coming up, holding hands goes a long way in maintaining a loving relationship. But sharing information about your finances goes even further. We will show you how. And uh, your 20s is a decade of self-discovery, dating, and shopping for your IKEA coffee tables, right? <laughs> well, it may also shape your lifetime earning potential. We will explain. Let's take a look at this breaking news from I-43 and right that traffic situation just south of Center Street. Looks like now they're opening uh, the lanes, the northbound lanes, up to more traffic. A semi and a, a car collided here. No word on injuries, but they do have more traffic moving through this area as they work to clean up the debris. We're back after this. For your money this afternoon, it's a good looking Thursday. We got green arrows across the board. The Dow up 110, the NASDAQ up 56, S&P 500 19 points higher at the end of the trading day. Retail sales took a dive in January. Lower gas prices and a drop in auto sales appear to be the big causes. Apparently, consumers are stashing the money they're saving at the pump and paying down their debt, probably from the holidays, instead of spending it on stuff. So what you did or did not do in your 20s will set the stage for your earnings for your lifetime. According to a new report from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, your first 10 years in the labor market will likely shape your lifetime earning potential for the average person. Earnings growth stalls after the first 10 years of a career. Economists study the career paths of 5 million workers over nearly 40 years. More money headlines now. Kisses will likely cost you a little more this Valentine's Day. U.S. chocolate makers have raised prices because of the price of cocoa beans. Those are go that's going up, so they cost more right now because of the growing demand for the product and poor growing conditions in West Africa. There are fancy chocolates, then there's this, the $260 bar of chocolate. It's made from a rare and unique cacao found in Ecuador. 
Each batch takes four to five months to make. The bar only available online and in a few fine wine stores. <laughs> this, this goes right into ask the expert here. <laughs> More spouses are cheating financially. A new study found one in five Americans has hidden a purchase of $500 or more. Men are twice as likely to be secret spenders. I, I didn't know that. I would not tell my wife I bought a $260 chocolate bar. Local financial professor Nick Folks from WealthWisconsin.com here to talk about why it's time for some financial couples to have a little therapy, so to speak. Yeah, definitely. It's common knowledge that majority of the fights that actually occur between couples is in regards to finances. Mm -hmm. It's in regards to money management. It's in, to, it's in regards to what is that that you bought. Um, and so one of the ways that we found to avoid these arguments is truly just to have an upfront and open and honest conversation about them. Okay, so what should couples be talking about? Well, we think it really depends on what stage you're in inside of the relationship. <laughs> okay. So uh, let's talk about a couple different categories. The first one's dating. When you start dating, what are we doing? We're always putting our best foot forward in dating. But well, what right. are your real spending habits? <laughs> exactly. Sometimes you're not as quick to talk about maybe some debt or some bad spending habits, but a little bit of hiding now can become a big problem later. Mm -hmm. We have a great financial compatibility quiz on our website, wealthwisconsin.com, that you can utilize to see are you and the person you're dating financially compatible with one another. It's too late for, for us. <laughs> We're both married. <laughs> Not to each other. Don't, right, don't no. take that the wrong way. So once you're married, though, you need to pool the money. Well, that's one option. Why don't you do a his and a hers account? Well, actually, here's one of the things I recommend. I recommend actually doing both. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I think it's important that you pool the money together for things like joint expenses, monthly expenses, bills. So then we don't have that argument of, well, I'm paying all the bills here and right. you have all the fun money. But if you can have a separate account with one another, then it allows you to have some discretionary spending so you don't have to f ask your spouse for every right. little thing that the you want to purchase. The money that's left over after you've put into the fund, you can go buy whatever you want. Exactly, so a little bit of both. Uh, a baby budget. Uh, yeah, this is all about making sure you're planning ahead. You don't mm -hmm. want to wait until you've got a teenager and try to figure out how you're going to pay for college. Uh, it's predicted that uh, in the future, if you have a baby today, it will cost about $220,000 for them to go to an in-state college when, they are, when they're wow. ready to head out. So with that in mind, you're going to plan while they're in diapers. Put away <laughs> about $250 a month for an in-state school. If you want them to go to a private school, that's about $500 a month you're going to want to start putting away now to make sure you're planning ahead. Last 10 seconds here, stagger retirement, explain that. Basically, when a couple wants to uh, retire together, it can be a good idea, but it can also be wise to stagger that timeline. It helps you maximize Social Security, also can help you with some health care coverage as well by utilizing the employer till one of you reaches Medicare age. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Got a question for any of our experts? Send an email, ask the expert at tmj4.com, or leave a voicemail at that number right there on your screen. If you do call that number, do not leave angry messages from Michael Fish. He cannot control what's <laughs> happening outside. He is merely the messenger. Uh, of course. Of course. 12 I love degrees how you want to blame in Port Washington. Me. Is the lake steaming fish? Uh, let's kind of look closely. Yeah, it is. A little bit, Steve. You know, you got that big difference in temperatures. It's real cold. You start to saturate that air a little bit. And as far as outside right now, of course, we do have some of that steam coming off the lake. But, you know, right now, we don't have any watches, warnings, or advisories. But as we head into the weekend, I bet there's probably going to be a wind chill advisory. Wait until you see how low these wind chills go because our winds are going to be cranking. Not so much tonight. These are wind chills at 5 o'clock right around the zero mark. So, yes, it still feels like the middle of winter as we go through the night. You see those wind chills still going just a little bit below zero by the time you wake up tomorrow morning. Again, nothing that you can handle. Yes, it is going to be cold. Now, tomorrow's wind chills during the day, not bad even into tomorrow evening. But look at it as we go into Saturday. There they go between 10 and 20 below, and that's not even with the wind gusts. The wind gusts are going to make it feel even colder than that. So if we do see a wind chill advisory, don't be surprised this weekend. But first things first, let's talk about temperatures tonight and chances of snow for tomorrow. Average high, 32. You know what? We didn't even make it to our average low today. Made it to 17 degrees. Now for tomorrow, we're bringing in just a little bit milder. It's still well below average. Going into the low 20s. But after this next system comes through, we're bringing back those temperatures like Minneapolis, Fargo, back into the single digits. But not so much quite yet. Currently 15, Milwaukee getting a little bit closer here, 13. Waukesha, New Berlin, same with Brookfield, moving to the south. You got 11 in Burlington and off to the north, 
real similar readings. As far as your uh, wind chills right now, right around the zero mark. Feels like two Milwaukee, five below in Waukesha. Now, satellite radar, quiet now. Here comes our next system, and with that, that's going to be our threat of a couple snow showers, flurries. Shouldn't be a major event, but quiet for tonight. Here comes our next system out ahead of it. A little bit of light snow or snow shower activity in late morning into the afternoon, and then that cold front really going to kick the temperatures down. But as far as tonight, again, we are going to keep things quiet. It's tomorrow. We'd see a little bit of light snow or flurries. That's just a chance, not a guarantee right now. So tonight, going down to four by the lake inland, zero. Four tomorrow, could see a couple flurries, snow showers. If there's any accumulation, it's going to be very light. 22 degrees for our high, but get ready. Here comes the front. Tomorrow night, it's going to start to kick up our winds at 8 degrees. And then Saturday, it's going to be really windy and cold. Did you see the wind gust? Up to 40 miles per hour. That'll get your attention when the temperature is only 10. Saturday night, still breezy. It's going to be bitterly cold. You wake up with four below on Sunday. At least our winds start to die down. And then we could see a little bit more light snow on Monday. And then this whole upcoming week, next seven days, you guys, well below average. So all those days that we had above average, now we're paying for them. And that's how we get to average. That, <laughs> thanks, Steve. You're right. Yes, thanks. So much snow in the New England area, the National Guard's been called in. Troops brought in some heavy-duty equipment to remove the snow. Dozens of cities and town now asking for extra help to dig out from the latest storm. And there's another one forecast for the weekend. While the Northeast has more snow than they know what to do with it, Anchorage, Alaska doesn't have enough for the Iditarod race. Instead, the dog sled race will start in Fairbanks. The Iditarod will start March 7th. Not enough snow in Alaska. They can't ship it, huh? Wouldn't work out. When you think of winter in Wisconsin, you certainly don't think of construction. But crews have been busy at work despite the season. These two homes located at 38th and North are being dedicated this afternoon. They are Habitat for Humanity homes. Coming up, a boat causes a traffic jam. We'll show you how uh, and why snow was really to blame next. And new at 430, a heart-stopping Valentine's Day prank and an arrest warrant issued for an animal. That and more in our now trending segment. And as we go to break, a live look at our DOT camera looking south upon the Marquette Interchange. There was that incident on uh, 43 North, just north of North Avenue. And you can see the effect it's having on all those northbound lanes backed up into the Marquette Interchange. If you are trying to get anywhere through that spaghetti bowl right now, please be patient. Starting for now, taking a look. A big boat stuck in the snow on its way to a boat show. Guess where? Boston. The truck towing the boat stalled and the yacht got hung up in a snowbank. A group of onlookers grabbed some shovels and started digging it out. The things they're having to do in Boston these days. Coming up, we're going to tell you who wants to ban yoga pants and why. Plus, when it comes to dealing with that little bit of extra weight, it may not be your fault entirely. We'll explain whose fault it is then. More news now, and some may consider this a little bit morbid. Facebook will now allow you to assign someone to take your profile over when you die. This feature will permit a user to choose what's called a legacy contact. That person would be able to post information on your behalf, respond to new friend requests, and update profile photos, but won't be able to change anything you've done in the past. We all know obesity can lead to an early death and a long list of health problems, but being overweight may not be entirely your fault. Researchers found genes regulate human body size, shape, and why fat gets stored in different parts of the body. Many of us throw on a pair of yoga pants before heading to the gym to work out, but a Montana lawmaker wants to ban yoga pants in public. Republican Representative David Moore thinks yoga pants are indecent. He's actually hoping to strengthen the state's indecent exposure law, in part because he hates seeing yoga pants worn in public, according to the Daily Mail. Thanks for joining us today at 4. More news coming up live at 4.30. From today's TMJ4, this is Breaking News Now. We're going to begin with a live look at the roads where traffic is at a standstill in parts of the Marquette Interchange. Yeah, this all stems in part from an accident on I-43 near Center Street earlier today. So if you do have to head out, you're going to be in this area take city streets because it is slow going. Don't roll down the window while you're out there stuck in traffic. Uh, we're in the midst of uh, winter, but uh, this is colder than we're used to this time of year.
We're dealing with a cold spell, dangerous wind chills ahead. And it may be in the teens today, but it feels much colder again because of those winds. Michael Fish joining us with the weather and you say, Fish, this is nothing. This is nothing. You're right, because this weekend, 40 mile per hour wind gusts. Those are strong wind gusts, but first things first, we have to talk about the chance of a little bit of snow here. Now, not right now. This is a look at Storm Team 4 Max radar, but you notice out to the west, starting to see those clouds on the increase and a little batch of some snow and flurries. Well, that's going to be slowly working its way through the areas we had through the day tomorrow. Now, here's what a look at a future forecast means. Going through the evening hours here, we're going to be completely quiet. Now overnight, still quiet. Yes, it is going to be on the chilly side, but there we go. We start to see a little bit of snow and snow shower and a couple flurries heading through the day tomorrow. Late morning going into the early afternoon. That's that next system slowly working its way through. And then behind this, that's when the real cold and wind gets here. But the cold and wind isn't here. Relatively speaking, remember, it's going to be a lot windier this weekend. Currently 12 Port Washington, West Bend 12, 15 in Milwaukee, but let's factor in the winds where the winds are actually dying down a little bit. Uh, temperature feels like wind chill of five below Waukesha, two in Milwaukee. Nothing that you can't handle, and that's a lot better than what it's going to be this weekend. So temperatures, actual temperatures falling through the single digits. Tomorrow, that chance of a little bit of snow, but this weekend, you guys, I'm going to let you know when those wind gusts make it to 40 and how cold those wind chills get in that full storm team forecast. All right, Fish, thank you. The captain of the Costa Concordia cruise ship has been sentenced to 16 years in prison, but survivors are not happy with the verdict. 32 people were killed when that ship crashed off the coast of Italy in 2012. Katie Turr talked to some of those survivors. Standing on the stage of a local theater, a panel of three judges literally held the high ground as they delivered Captain Francesco Schettino's fate. Schettino Francesco. 16 years in prison, 10 for multiple counts of manslaughter, 5 for causing a shipwreck, and 1 for abandoning ship. In the plush red velvet seats below, the prosecution and defense, but no Scatino. The captain, who broke down during a hastily thrown together final plea to court. <laughs> was a no-show for sentencing. The Concordia went aground and capsized on the rocks off Giglio in January 2012, killing 32 people. It took two years for salvagers to upright and haul away the ghostly cruise liner and two-thirds of that time for the trial of the man at its helm. I remember moments of it, they come to me in flashes. Survivors were not satisfied. Someone who's sorry doesn't leave a ship and go look for dry socks while people are dying on the ship. Anne Ducray tried to get her own apology. It didn't even took two minutes of his small life for asking me how I feel. Ultimately, Scatino was as unconvincing to his judges as he was to his passengers. Now, Scatino maintained from the start that he fell into the lifeboat when the ship suddenly listed to its side. Costa didn't come out unscathed from this either. They'll be fined 30,000 euros for each of the passengers that sued. That's well into the millions. As for the theater, well, authorities said they were trying to accommodate what they thought would be record crowds throughout this trial but it did remain largely empty. Back to you. Well, a 32-year-old man is facing charges today, accused of racking up thousands of dollars on a pro golfer's credit card. Australian golfer Robert Allenby was in Honolulu when he claims he was beaten, robbed, and kidnapped. Later discovered $23,000 had been charged to his credit card. Police do not believe Allenby was kidnapped, but investigators have charged Patrick Harbison for allegedly spending all of that money. He made purchases throughout Honol the Honolulu area at various retail and convenience stores. Uh, there were various items that were purchased, uh, some of which we actually recovered. It's not clear if the suspect had any contact with Allenby that night. Among other things, the suspect is charged with three counts of identity theft. 60 Minutes correspondent Bob Simon is dead after a car accident in New York City. CNN's Andrew Spencer reports on his life and tragic death. Through his reporting, Bob Simon earned numerous awards, including 27 Emmys and four Peabody's. The 60 Minutes correspondent started at CBS News in 1967 as a reporter and editor based in New York. For somebody who'd been in the business that long and seen as many things as he had seen, to still have that curiosity and that desire to tell other people's stories, um, it's, it's an incredible thing, and it's just so stunning to me that he's gone. 
Simon and three of his colleagues were captured by Iraqi forces in 1991 at the beginning of the Gulf War and imprisoned for more than a month. Our 40 days and 40 nights had a long list of horrible things that happened to us. It had a very short list of good things. In a special report Wednesday night, a visibly upset Scott Pelley confirmed the news. Our 60 Minutes colleague Bob Simon was killed this evening. It was a car accident in New York City. New York police say Simon's driver hit another car at a red light before hitting the median barrier. Police arrived to find Simon trapped in the back of a Lincoln town car. The 73-year-old was unconscious with injuries to his head and his upper body. After being extricated, he was taken to a hospital where he later died. The driver was hospitalized in stable condition. Nobody else was injured. I'm Andrew Spencer reporting. Pope Francis is sharing his stance on childbearing. The pontiff told parishioners at his weekly audience, children are a blessing, not a burden. He says families who want multiple children should not be seen as irresponsible. And he also considers not having children, quote, a selfish choice. Keeping the smaller members of your family safe when this weather gets cold. Swaller and hurry. Carol Meekins in the newsroom now with a story coming up new on Live at 6. That's right, Stephen Courtney. The wind chills have tumbled well below zero all over our area, and your pets are vulnerable. Coming up, the hottest selling items at local stores, including a popular alternative to pet booties. We'll have more on that coming up new on Live at 6. They need to be kept warm, too. Yes, they do. Carol, thanks. Coming up, hearts are racing, blood is boiling. And it's all because of a movie. We have a sneak peek of Fifty Shades of Grey. Plus, why parents in Pennsylvania are turning Fifty Shades of Red over an assignment given to their children. We're going to tell you how a teacher went too far. So check this out. A Pennsylvania middle school trying to explain how a group of kids ended up with a Fifty Shades of Grey themed word search. Okay. Some of the words the students were asked to find would make an adult blush. It was handed out in class to at least five students in eighth grade. A school board member claims it was a huge but unintentional error. Fifty Shades of Grey opening in theaters this weekend. That is not all. CNN's Martha Shade has a preview of the films now showing at the box office this weekend. Mr. Grey will see you now. You've probably heard of the wildly popular book Fifty Shades of Grey. Now, see the movie. It tells the story of Anastasia, a literature student who interviews the wealthy businessman Christian Grey. The two become close, and he reveals his secrets. My tastes are very singular. You wouldn't understand. Enlighten me then. And she discovers her own desires. Fifty Shades of Grey is rated R. Meet the Kingsman. Kingsman is an international intelligence agency operating at the highest level of discretion. And the Kingsman agents are the new knights. The super secret organization recruits a street kid into their ranks just as an evil tech genius threatens the world. Mankind is the virus and I'm the cure. Sounds like a lot of people are going to die. Kingsman, the secret service is rated R. For now showing, I'm Martha Shade. Coming up, how some Wisconsin students are spreading their wings to learn a new lesson outdoors. But first, we head outdoors to Waukesha. 10 degrees. Hey. If that's not enough, more snow and strong winds in the forecast for the weekend. Meteorologist Michael Fish will show you what to expect each day and how much you're going to have to shovel. Thanks a lot for being with us this afternoon. Now, we don't have any watches, warnings, or advisories as of right now. But I think as we go into the weekend, we might see a couple advisories out there, not for snow. This is going to be for wind chill because not only is it going to get cold, but boy, is it going to get windy as well. Here's a look at our future wind chill map. Now, as we go through tonight, you can see our wind chills right around that zero degree mark. Now, that's nothing that you can't handle. Going overnight, we drop just a little bit below zero. Watch through the day tomorrow. We go above zero because winds aren't going to be too bad. But once we bring through that cold front and that wind, look at our wind chills just dropping. This is Saturday afternoon between 10, 20 below, and that's not even with wind gusts. We're going to have wind gusts of 40 miles per hour. That's going to kick these down even farther. So get ready. The cold is on its way. If you thought today was cold, wait until Saturday. So these are what our averages are. Look at the average low of 19. Well, we didn't even make it there today. 17 in Milwaukee. Now, for tomorrow, just a little bit of a moderating trend. You have some 20s down to the south, 18 Chicago. 
But once our next system moves its way on through, behind it, you've got more single digits that are going to be rolling their way our way. Uh, currently, that front is not through yet, but it's still cold. 15 currently, Milwaukee 12 as far as Waukesha, Pewaukee, Heartland. Moving to the south, you've got 10, Burlington. East Troy sitting at 13, same with Sullivan. And off to the north, it's 10, uh, Plymouth, 14, Fond du Lac, and 12 in Oakfield. Either way you cut it, that's well below average, but our winds are dying down a little bit. So the wind chill, not that bad. Feels like one below Port Washington, two below in Sheboygan. Now, the cold is just one part of the story in the wind. The other is this weak disturbance with a little bit of snow along it. Now, here's a look at our future forecast model. Quiet tonight. Here comes that next system out ahead of it. A little bit of light snow shower activity, a couple of flurries. But then once that cold front gets through, get ready. It's going to get cold and windy, especially going through Saturday. So here's a look at tonight. We're going to keep things completely quiet, a little bit on the cold side. Now, by tomorrow morning, we start off dry. But as the day goes on, here we go, and you see some blues starting to pop up, some whites. That means a little bit of snow shower activity. Uh, it should be light, okay? If you see any accumulation, it would be very, very light. So for tonight, increasing clouds, inlands, temperature, zero degrees, but we'll keep it quiet. Tomorrow could see a couple flurries or snow showers. Any accumulation would be light, if anything at all. It's going to start to get a little bit breezy tomorrow night. And boy, is it going to be windy and cold Saturday. Look at those wind gusts, 40 miles per hour. Our wind chill all day between 10 and 20 below zero. So as we go through Sunday, still another cold day, 12 degrees, but we're going to have a lot less wind. Now we could see a little bit of light snow as we head through the day on Monday, maybe holding on to Tuesday. After that, you think we're going to make any improvement? Unfortunately, guys, not really. Still temperatures well below average, 15 on Wednesday. But when you feel Saturday and you step outside with a 40 mile per hour wind I'm and it's 10, to. well, that's probably the smart idea. Stay in your car and make that quick dash to the stores or restaurants. Quick dash. Thank you, Fish. Yep. Some students in western Wisconsin have put down their tablets and their smartphones, and they're turning their attention to the sky. Brittany Schmidt shows how a school district in Trempolo County is giving kids a bird's eye view perspective. All right, would you please put your books on top of your desk? Mr. Briggs' third grade class spends most of their day in a classroom. Where is that information going to be written first? Just like any other class, they're listening, reading, and working on assignments. But at certain times throughout the day, these students spread their wings and break out of the norm. I try to leave the camera up, and if nothing's going on, we just go about our general business of the day. And then if something happens, we'll take notice. Mr. Briggs and his students are monitoring a pair of eagles named Blair and Taylor using two cameras that have been set up on the nest. We expect, if we're lucky, to get eggs at the end of the month, beginning of March. Until then, the students are taking full advantage of their bird's eye view of the nest. I like seeing the eagles. They're bringing like grass and sticks in or perching on the branch or just sitting there. Our eagles are really talented. She lands in it with the stick and she holds it in one uh, toe and she lands on the branch on one foot. Mr. Briggs says it takes learning to new heights. Well, it's our kind of window to the outside world. They're excited, especially when, when things are happening in the nest and things are busy. They're, of course, going to be more interested. And if it's more interesting, Mr. Briggs says the students are more likely to remember. They can turn their head around almost about to here. For an egg to hatch, it takes about 35 to 37 days. Which makes the learning that much more impactful. Impactful. And that is why Mr. Briggs has no plans to clip the project's wings anytime soon. As long as that tree's still standing and the nest is still there and we still have bald eagles, I have seen no, why, no reason why not to continue with the project. In Blair, Brittany Schmidt. So this is the fifth year of that program. This year, the class is working with the Wisconsin DNR and the National Eagle Center to include more environmental presentations. Coming up, if you are losing, trying to lose weight, the answer to your problem could already be in your pocket. We'll tell you what it is and why it may not cost you a dime. But first, your television tonight. Share your plans with it. Wisconsin tonight at 6.30. The Slap premieres at 7. The Blacklist at 8. Allegiance at 9. More local news on Live at 10. Time now for today's tip. If you are looking to lose some weight, a new study found smartphone apps and wearable devices are the way to go. Many fitness apps are free. Wearable devices like Fitbit, Jawbone, and Nike will cost you some money, but are supposed to do more. But researchers found wearable devices in general 
are less accurate than the smartphone apps. Now to what's trending, a Valentine's Day prank that could have gone very wrong. First, though, role models, not runway models, will take to the catwalk in New York City. Vince Vetrano explains in today's Now Trending. Now trending, a first for New York City Fashion Week. The first model with Down syndrome will take part by walking down the runway this year. Jamie Brewer is an actress best known for her work on American Horror Story and an advocate for people with intellectual disabilities. She'll be a part of designer Carrie Hammer's show called Role Models, Not Runway Models. An arrest warrant issued for Punxsutawney Phil, the groundhog. Police Department in New Hampshire apparently not happy that they're dealing with six more weeks of winter. The department posted on its Facebook page that officers have received a number of complaints. No surprise as the Northeast is preparing for more snow today. They have to get a better picture of Punxsutawney Phil that looked a lot like the groundhog from Caddyshack. After this experience, a group of men will probably never go on a blind date again. Ford Motor Company set them up with the same woman as a Valentine's Day prank. The guys get to know the lady, and then she takes him out for a ride in her Mustang, claiming she's just not very experienced driving stick. I don't know. I mean, I'm a very adventurous guy. Uh, yeah, I think you might want to shift that. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Why are we going so fast? <laughs> At the end of the ride, she finally lets him know that she's actually a professional stunt driver. <laughs> oh, and also not there to date them. For more stories like these, you can head to NowTrending.com, a special section of our website. Thanks for joining us at 4.30. The news continues now with Live at 5. Next at 5, the wind chills tumbling well below zero. Coming up, some family-friendly places to cure your cabin fever. Live at 5 starts now.